passage, turn in your Bibles to Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. If you don't have a Bible, everything that I'm going to be reading from my Bible is going to be on the screen. So Acts chapter 8. And we're in week 4 and the final week of a series all about the Holy Spirit called The God I Never Knew. And a lot of the content from this series uh, outside of the Bible is actually coming from this book from one of my pastors, Pastor Robert Morris. Uh, uh, Heather and I had a pleasure of serving on staff at Gateway Church in Dallas, Fort Worth, Metroplex area, and uh, under his leadership. And uh, he wrote this book called The God I Never Knew. And so I encourage you if, you know, we've been dipping our toe into things, if you want to learn more, I encourage you to grab this book. Uh, But this series is called The God I Never Knew because that was my story. See, I grew up in church. Uh, So we were there every single time the doors were open. I don't know if that was your story, but that was my story. And I grew up and I knew a lot about God the Father. I knew a lot about God the Son, Jesus. But the Holy Spirit was truly the God I never knew. And so for the majority of my life, I had no relationship with the Holy Spirit. And we don't want that for you. In fact, what I've been praying specifically for you over the last four weeks of this series is that you would experience what 2 Corinthians 13, 14 describes as the intimate friendship of the Holy Spirit. I've been praying that for you, that you would experience that because that will, I promise you, change your life. It will change your life. And so in week one, we talked about the person of the Holy Spirit, that he is not an it, that he is a person. And why that is so important is because if he's a person, that means you and I can have a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. And that personal relationship comes with some amazing benefits. And so in weeks two and three, we talked about some of those benefits. Like week two, we talked about the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And in week three, we talked about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And if you missed any of those messages, I highly encourage you to go back. We have an amazing creative and production team that works so hard making sure that we capture all this and able to put it as resources on the internet. And so if you want to watch those, you can go to our YouTube channel and check out any of our past messages as well as if you want to listen to it, we have an audio podcast on Spotify and Apple. Now this week, we're going to be talking about how to access all those benefits. Because we talked about, man, there's some incredible benefits that come with having an intimate friendship and relationship with the Holy Spirit. And today, we're going to talk about how to access those and even more. And so today, if you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. We're going to be talking about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. The baptism in the Holy Spirit. Let's pray And let's invite God to do whatever he wants to do over the next few minutes. God, we are so grateful to be here. We are so grateful for every person that is joining us online or in the overflow room or right here in Memorial Hall Auditorium. And God, you need to know that we did not come here today to play church. And so God, right now in Jesus' name, would you help us remove every single distraction Every single distraction from our personal life, every single distraction that's happening right now in our country, in our world. And God, we just, we we don't want to ignore those things. But God, we want to hear from you about those things. And so God, we open up our whole lives to you and give you permission to speak. God, I ask that you give my words weight today. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said... Amen. How many of you, by show of hands, have ever heard of the word baptism? How many of you just have ever heard of the word baptism? Now, I don't know what you think of when you think of the word baptism. Maybe you think that is an exclusive church word. It's a very churchy, Christianese word that means this one specific thing. But if you go back to the original language that the New Testament of the Bible was written in, in the Greek language, the word baptism... It actually comes from the Greek word baptizo. Come on, I'll bust out some Greek on you today within the first few minutes. Baptizo. And here's all it means to immerse. That's it. So when you see the word baptism in the Bible, the literal definition means to immerse. 
And the Bible consistently talks and mentions three different baptisms, three different immersions. And so let's go through those very quickly. Number one, the Bible talks a lot about this baptism, that the Holy Spirit baptizes us in Jesus. And if you like writing just kind of extra notes right beside that, write the word salvation. This is talking about salvation, that the Holy Spirit baptizes us in Jesus. This is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We actually talked about this in week one, about the role of the Holy, one of the many roles of the Holy Spirit is to help get us to Jesus. And we'll see this in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. It says, we have been baptized, immersed into Jesus, into Christ's body by the one spirit, talking about the Holy Spirit. Ten verses earlier, I love what this says. It says, no one, no one can say Jesus is Lord. In other words, no one can experience salvation except by the Holy Spirit. And so this is talking about salvation. When you get saved, when you make the decision, like that last verse said, to make Jesus the Lord of your life. In other words, it's whenever you make the decision to follow Jesus. Now, salvation, we have to understand, is not religion. That salvation is not keeping this long list, this long legalistic list of do's and don'ts. It's because salvation is not behavior modification. That salvation is not going to church. Salvation is not this part-time, compartmentalized hour of my week. Here's what salvation is. Salvation is an immersion into a real, daily, passionate, all-in affects every single area of our life. Affects my marriage. It affects my friendships. It affects how I do my job. It affects how I do finance. Every single area of our life. It is an immersion into, get this, a relationship with Jesus. That is what this baptism is. That is what salvation is. Is And here's why that is such a big deal. Because when we get saved, we actually become a new person. The Bible talks about this with this language. Maybe you've heard of it, born again. And so the Bible talks about this language of whenever you get saved, you are born again. You become a new person. And get this, whenever you do get saved and you make that decision... God also gives you the gift of the Holy Spirit and puts the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. Now, if you're here, you're watching online, you're in an overflow room, and you've never made that decision, let me look you in the eye and just say, this is your first step in your spiritual journey. Everything starts with this choice. And just so you know, we are going to give you that opportunity today to make that choice at the end of this message. And by the way, in the first 113 weeks of our church, yeah, I'm still counting it by weeks. We are 113 and 0, still undefeated. At the end of today, we will be 114 and 0. But in the first 113 weeks of our church, by the way, get ready to celebrate. We've seen 688 people make that decision. Come on, isn't that awesome? 688 people have made that decision, including four last Sunday. And so we're so grateful. We love that. So the first baptism that the Bible talks about is the Holy Spirit baptizes us in Jesus. That's salvation. Here's the second. The disciple baptizes us in water. And that's water baptism. That's water baptism. In Matthew chapter 28, in verse 19... It says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, of all people. Make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And by the way, I want to make this very clear. You don't have to be water baptized to be saved. Now, I grew up in a tradition, in a church, in a denomination that believed that. That believed that you had to be baptized to be saved. And if you didn't fully get baptized, I'm talking about like head to toe, every, like you wouldn't have that body part in heaven. 
So like if you went in, your hand was out, just be gone. Like you just wouldn't have, do that. <laughs> Kidding, sort of. Um, but here's why that can't be true. Because I've thought about this. I've wrestled with this. Here's why this can't be true. Because God never attached any work to the free gift of salvation. It's free. You cannot earn it or deserve it. You can only receive it. And so in Ephesians chapter 2, listen to what it says in 8 9. God saved you, not by your works, but by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for reading your Bible all the time or going to church all the time or giving the church a lot of money or doing whatever you can to help whatever in the world. Like salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. But water baptism is an extremely important step for every believer. So by no means do I minimize it. And here's why. See, the salvation experience is a private decision. That's why every single week, if you've hung out around here, you know that at the end of this message, I'm gonna ask everybody to bow their head and close their eyes. And we're gonna create a private, intimate moment for people to make that decision. But that decision needs to go public at some point. See, water baptism is the same reason that I wear my wedding ring. Because it lets everybody know that your boy is taken. <laughs> you can't have any of this. That's why I wear this wedding ring. But listen, this ring does not make me married to Heather. Heather. The covenant and the decision that I made when I looked at her in the eyes on May 22nd, 2004, that's what makes me married to Heather. See, this ring is just a public declaration of a private, intimate decision, and that's water baptism. But even more than that, even more than going public, there's something that supernaturally that happens in the process of water baptism. It's more than going public. Listen to what Colossians chapter 2, verse 12 says. For you were buried with Christ when you were baptized. And with him, you were raised to new life because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. Let me put it this way, that when you get saved, that very first baptism, we become a new person. But when we get water baptized, the second baptism, the old person is cut off. So if you've made the decision to follow Jesus, if you've experienced that first baptism, if you've said yes to Jesus and experienced salvation, but you haven't been water baptized, this is your next step. Now, because of COVID, we haven't been able to do water baptisms in a hot minute, but we are working right now uh, behind the scenes to creatively and innovatively and safely be able to facilitate water baptisms. So if you're here and you know, man, that's the step I need to take, I want to encourage you to go at some point. You can do it right now. You can do it later. Just write this down, queencitypeople.com slash water baptisms. And you can sign up. Let us know that, hey, this is what I, 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 need to, I need to experience this baptism. And we'll do whatever we can do to help facilitate that and help you in that. So those are the first two, but there's a third. And so the third is this. Jesus, he baptizes us in the Holy Spirit. And beside that, you can write spirit baptism. So Jesus, the third, is that he baptizes us in the Holy Spirit, spirit baptism. Let me show you this in Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. This is actually John the Baptist talking. And this is what he says. He says, I baptize with water, that second one those who repent of their sins and turn to God. But someone is coming who is greater than I am. Talking about Jesus. So much greater that I'm not even worthy to be a slave and carry his sandals. He, talking about Jesus, will baptize you with. Another word for that in the Greek language is in. So he will baptize you with or in the Holy Spirit and with fire. 
Now, there are a lot of people that have been taught that the first baptism and the third baptism that we've talked about so far, they're the same, but they're not. See, the first baptism is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one doing the baptizing. But the, the third baptism is the baptism in or with the Holy Spirit. So the first one is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The second one is the baptism in or with the Holy Spirit. Theologically, these cannot be the same. Even more than that, grammatically, they cannot be the same. And so all three of these baptisms are important. And all three of these baptisms play a significant role in our spiritual journey. And all three of these baptisms go hand in hand. Let me show you this. Here's the big why behind it. Because when we get saved, we become a new person. When we get water baptized, the second baptism, the old person is cut off. But when we get baptized in the Holy Spirit, we receive the power to walk in our new life. You need to know that this church is built on the fact that we believe with all our heart. We've gone all in on the fact that living life God's way is the best possible life that we could ever live on planet earth. Like it's better than anything. It's better than any job we can get. It's better than any amount of money we can make. It's better than any relationship that we can have. That the best maxed out life to the full that we could ever live is found following Jesus. We believe that with all our heart. And get this, the Holy Spirit actually gives us the power to live that life. That he gives us the power to live life his way. He gives us the power to face anything that life throws our way. He gives us the power to do what he's calling us to do, to step into our purpose and make a difference with our life. The Holy Spirit powers all of that. And I don't know about you, but I want that type of power in my life. Not only do I want that type of power, truthfully, I need that type of power. See, I'm desperate for it because I know what I can do on my own. And get this, it's not enough. It's not, that's not me having poor self-esteem. I'm just being a realist. I know me and me by myself without the power that comes from God is not enough. I need help and I want it. So let me show you a couple examples in the Bible of all three baptisms in the same place. See if you can see all three. Here's the first, Acts chapter 8, what I had you turn to right at the beginning. Acts chapter 8, starting in verse 12. It says, but now the people believed Philip's message of good news. By the way, the good news always refers to the gospel. And the gospel is always good news. It's never bad news. And so it says that the people, they believed the good news. They believed the gospel. That's baptism number one, salvation concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ. As a result of them believing and receiving salvation, many men and women were baptized. That's baptism number two, water baptism. But it goes on to say in verse 16 that the Holy Spirit had not come upon any of them, for they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands upon their believers, and they received the Holy Spirit. Spirit, all three baptisms in one little story. Let me show you one more example, and I love this text. Um, This is one that, like, honestly, like, I get so excited reading this one. Uh, And this is in 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. It says, for there are three, everybody say three, three. There are three that bear witness in heaven. The Father, the Word, which... The the author John, if you read John chapter 1, he constantly refers to Jesus as the Word. You see, it's capital W. I think they're all capital up there. Yep. Um, (laughs) But if there was punctuation and grammar, uh, it would be a capital W, okay? So that means Jesus. So the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. That refers to the Trinity, okay? And they bear witness where? In heaven. But the next verse says, and there are three, everybody say three. Three that bear witness here on earth. The spirit, 
the water and the blood. And in the Bible, blood always represents salvation. And these three agree as one. So let me show you this way. You're probably wondering, what in the world is all this stuff? So imagine that this water bottle, this container right here, is you. And that the water, that it represents the Holy Spirit. See, when we experience that first baptism, when we get saved, let me show you what happens. Here's what happens. It's as simple as this. That's it. You literally open yourself up to receive. To receive salvation, the free gift of salvation. And then the amazing thing is that whenever you do that, the Bible also says that you receive the Holy Spirit. And so that's amazing. That's awesome. That is a picture of the first baptism whenever you get saved. Now, second baptism, and I'm going to put this back on theologically. You leave it open, but (laughs) there's a lot of things up here that I do not want to get wet. Um, So just go there with me. Illustration, okay? See, when you get baptized, water baptized, remember, you go public with other people. And it's so important because who wants to be in a relationship that you want to hide from everybody else? And so part of water baptism is that you go public. It's the wedding ring. But the cool thing is that the Bible says supernaturally there's something that happens. Is that whenever you get saved, you become a new person. That's where we get that term born again. But whenever you get water baptized, you're buried and then you're raised to brand new life. And so there's a leaving supernaturally of the old life. But then the Bible says that there's a third. That there's a baptism in the Holy Spirit. And what this and what I wanted to do, they couldn't make happen. I wanted to have a massive pool. Because that would probably be a little bit more theologically accurate. But whenever we receive the gift of the baptism in the Holy Spirit, we get completely immersed. Head to toe, top to bottom, front to back, in and out. Every single area of our life, our thoughts, our emotions, everything, get baptized, get immersed in the Holy Spirit. And so whenever you become a new person, when you get saved, you become a new person. When you get water baptized, the old person is cut off. And then when you receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit, you have the power to live the life that God is calling you to live. So here's the big question today. Have you ever experienced that third baptism? And have you ever experienced the baptism in the Holy Spirit? If not, the bigger question is, how can you experience that today? It's very simple. A lot of times we think that there's a lot of theological hoops that we have to jump through. There's a lot of times where there's stigmas that are attached to that. And that there's something that could be weird or or hokey or anything like that. But let me just tell you, it's as easy as one, two, three. Here's the first. Is that we got to remove all the barriers. And I want you to understand this, church. Please, look me in the eyes. Online, listen. Overflow. you got to get this. God has more for you. God has more for your life. Wherever you are right now, I promise you, God has more for it. But we have a responsibility to remove all the barriers that are in the way from keeping him to do those things. Maybe your barriers are what you've experienced in the past. Maybe it's what you've been taught in the past. Maybe your barriers is your own mind. I know for me, that was such a long time. Like, like that was me. It's like, until I fully understand something, man, my walls are up and I'm closed off. I've got to fully figure out everything that's happening. Maybe for you, the barrier is the fear of the unknown. But today, I'm asking that we remove all the barriers. The second, all we have to do is remove all the barriers. Second is request the baptism in the Holy Spirit. That's it. Just ask 
Simply ask for it. And I love Luke chapter 11, verse 13. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who go through all this stuff, have to do all these things, who ask? I love that. And then third, it's just receive. Receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit by faith. And I want you to underline those last two words, by faith. That's it? Yep. Just receive him? Yep. It's that simple? Yep. I, got, I, got to, I don't got to do all this stuff and jump through all these theological hoops? Nope. And I, went, and I had you underline those last two words, by faith, on purpose. Because there's no way that you can avoid the faith part of this whole following Jesus. It's how God rolls. I personally don't like that very much. It would be so much easier if the faith wasn't required. But at some point, you have got to wrestle with things in faith. Because you and I, we can understand, we can learn, we can be taught up into a point, but eventually, we all got to take a big step of faith. Because almost everything in the kingdom of God is by faith. For example, how do you experience salvation? Like, how do you know that you're saved? That when I raise a hand, when I pray a prayer, when I do that, how do I know that my eternal destination is secure? By faith. How do you know that when you pray, that God hears you? And not only hears you, that he has the power and the care and the concern, and he loves you enough to listen and to do something about it. How? By faith. How do we know that whenever we actually commit to tithing, that we believe that, that like, how do you know that God can do more with 90% than you can do with 100%? It's by faith. How do you know that God works everything out for your good? All things work for your good. How? By faith. And how do you know he's got the whole world in his hands, even during COVID? It's by faith. See, everything is by faith. We cannot avoid that. So how do you receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit, it's by faith. Now, this message means so much to me because of how it, this has literally changed my life. Now, there's certain messages that when, you know, like they, they changed my life and maybe they shifted my perspective. Maybe I learned something that I never learned. This one literally changed the course and the trajectory of my life. And that's why I've been praying for you today. I've been praying that you experience, life change, and it means so much to me because of that. Like I told you earlier, I grew up in church. Like literally, it was one of those families where we were there every single time the doors were open. I mean, we were there all the time. And the best way I can describe it, I knew a lot about God. Like I could answer a lot of questions. I knew a lot of facts. I want a lot of Bible trivia. I could find the verses super fast, faster than everybody else in that Bible drill, you know? And so I knew a lot about God, but I didn't have a relationship with God. And I knew deep down that I'm missing out on something, that there had to be more. And then everything changed in my life on June 25th, 1999 on the back porch of Burton Bible Building, when on my knees, I made a decision to experience the first baptism. When I made the decision to give my entire life, it wasn't just a, I mean, this was like all in, completely immersed and baptized into Jesus. And I experienced salvation on that day. I went all in with Jesus and I became a new person. Later after that, I was water baptized, I went public. But I still, at that point in my life, I still hadn't heard or experienced anything about the person or the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was truly the God I never knew. Now fast forward all the way to 2012. At that time I was in my 30s. And I, some of y'all are adding things up. Y'all are like, how old is he, you know? I was in my 30s, and get this, I'd been in full-time ministry 
working, serving, building Jesus' church for eight years at that point. But I felt like everything I had done and accomplished up until that point was done on my own in my limited power. And I felt like, I don't know if you ever felt like this, but I felt like I had to work so hard each and every day just to barely keep my head above water. Like, like I had to put forth everything that I had, not just to thrive, but to simply survive and not drown in all the things. And that was in every area of my life. That was in my family. That was in me being a husband. That was in ministry. It was like I tried and I tried and I tried. And I, I was so physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally exhausted. And at that point in my life, I was so close on the verge of burnout, so much so that for about six months, I experienced physical problems that I couldn't shake, all related to burnout. And then one night, I felt like God wanted me to spend some time with him. See, at that point in my life, at night, what I would typically do is just escape. So I would escape into work, and I would escape into emails, I would escape into sports center. I would just escape. But I felt so strong from God that night that instead of my normal escaping, that I needed to spend some intentional time with God. And so I grabbed my Bible, a notepad, and an iPad, and I sat down and I turned on a message. And that message was from my future pastor that I didn't know at the time. And it was this message. The message was the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And I remember that day like it was yesterday. I remember listening to that message and being wrecked. Because the thing that I kept thinking over and over and over again, I kept thinking like, I'm just barely surviving on my own power when I've been missing out on this supernatural power that was available to me. So on my face before God, Literally, it was on my face, ugly crying. It's like where your tears and snot, everything is, is running. Everything. And on my face before God in my guest bedroom, right there in that moment, is that I asked, I didn't ask God to heal me. I asked for more of God. And I received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And in that moment, was the first and up until this point in my life, the only time that I personally experienced a supernatural healing. All those health problems that were going on in that moment instantly healed. Now, I don't know where you are theologically on that. You're like, I don't know. Listen, that's what I experienced. And so, like, like that's just the truth. How many of you have ever heard of the term signs and wonders? Anybody? Anybody heard of the term signs? I wonder why that happened too. I have no clue. I can't explain it. But I know that's what I experienced there in that moment. And more than that, from that moment on, I'm telling you, my life has been radically different. It's like I got jet engine fuel. I mean, I'm telling you, my life has been totally different. I've operated in more power than ever before. Instead of rowing, now I'm sailing. Instead of sitting there trying my hardest at everything, it's like there's this fresh wind that takes me everywhere each and every day. And I truly believe that that moment launched me to where I am today including God speaking to me on a random Tuesday about planting a new life-giving church which led our family on this journey to launch Queen City Church on September 16th, 2018 in the greatest city in the world. And now listen, what we believe now, 114 weeks later, is that we are in the middle of a miracle. And listen, here's what I want you to hear. It wasn't because of clever marketing, charismatic leadership. It wasn't because of anything like that. It wasn't because of any of that stuff. It was because all this was empowered by the Holy Spirit. I want you to understand and make a connection that every single thing empowered this whole thing. And he can do that and even more for you. That there's a power that is available to you through the Holy Spirit to live the life 
that he has called you to live. And I want you to hear this, church, from the bottom of my heart. This is what this whole series has been about. I believe with all of my heart, everything I have, that a relationship with the Holy Spirit, baptism in the Holy Spirit, that friendship, that immersion can change your life. I want you to bow your head and close your eyes. And um, we're not going to rush this. In fact, every single week at the end of our services, if you're new around here, we always create space at the end of our time together to hear God. And that's why we do that, so that we can hear God. And I always encourage you to pray and ask God two questions, regardless of where you are in your spiritual journey, to ask God, God, what are you saying to me today? And then we also encourage you to ask, God, what what is the next step? Like, what can my response be? And we've intentionally designed this service to not rush this moment. In fact, as we end this series, we wanted to intentionally create a little extra space for you to ask God those two questions. What are you saying to me and what does my response need to be? And we wanted to create extra space for you to hear God. And the worship team, in just a moment, is going to lead us in a song. But here's what I want to encourage you to do. I encourage you to put yourself in the best possible position to hear God. And so if that's you being still, being silent, just taking some time to be calm and to open up your mind and heart to hear from God, to answer those questions... That's cool. If it's singing and being a part of that, if that opens, like, here's the goal. The goal is that you hear God. And in just a moment after that, I'm going to come back up and I'm going to lead two responses. The first response is going to be the most important decision of your life, the decision to follow Jesus, to experience that first baptism. And I'm going to encourage you, if you've never been saved, to make that decision today. And then I'm going to lead a second response. And that's I'm going to lead you in a very simple prayer to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And I tell you that now because I want you to take some time to really ask God, God, what does my response need to be? And we don't want to rush this. And here's what I don't want to do. I have no desire to talk you into anything. I want you to hear God and then obey. That's it. So if you're online, I want you to do the same exact thing. Remove all distractions. If you're in the overflow room, remove all distractions. And let's take just a moment to hear God, to ask him, what's my response need to be? And what are you saying to me? And so God, I ask in Jesus' name for you to speak to every person. Give us all a next step. In Jesus' name, amen. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare your living home. Your presence. Tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves, but my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your presence, Holy Spirit.
With every eye closed and every head bowed, if you're here and you've never received the gift of salvation, if you've never said yes to Jesus, you've never received his love, his forgiveness, his grace, or maybe you have in the past, you've had that experience before, but you've walked away from God, you feel like there's a gap between you and God, and today you just need a fresh start. I'm telling you, this is the most important decision of your life. This is the first step in your spiritual journey. Everything starts with this. And here's our commitment. We're not gonna point you out. We're not gonna make you come forward, embarrass you in any way. This is a private decision with every eye closed, just you and God. But I'm gonna ask you to take one step. And that's in just a moment, I wanna lead you in a simple prayer. If you know that's the decision I need to make, And I believe that that prayer can change your eternity. And so if you're here and you wanna say yes to Jesus, if you wanna experience salvation, start or restart a relationship with Jesus. On the count of three, I'm gonna ask you to boldly put your hand in the air and just say, that's me, that's my step today. Include me in that prayer. 688 people have made that decision in the history of our church. And that could be you right now. And if you're here and that's you and you know that's what the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, that that's your decision, on the count of three, just raise your hand. One, two, three. If that's you, just raise it up. It's, this is my decision. I need to make this decision. I got you. I got you. It's awesome. Online, if that's you, say, that's my decision today. That's great. That's awesome. I want you to right now, you put your hands down and just pray this in your heart. Just say, Jesus, I need you. I'm sorry if I've lived my life without you. Holy Spirit, I ask that you come and live inside me. And will you change me? Make me a brand new person. I surrender my whole life to you. I give you my life. And today, I choose to follow you. And with every eye still closed and every head still bowed, maybe you're here and you're just like me. And you're just like my story. You've been a believer. You've made the decision to follow Jesus. Maybe you've been water baptized, but you've never experienced the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And today, we want to invite you to take that step and receive all that God has for you, including his power, to include the power to live the life that he's calling you to live. And if that's you, If you're here and you're like, that's my decision, I've never experienced that, or I have and I want to experience that again, if you're here and that's you, I'm going to ask you to be bold and not just raise your hand. I'm going to ask you on the count of three to stand to your feet and say, that's me. This is my decision. I want to receive that today. And if that's you, on the count of three, one, two, three, just stand to your feet and say, that's me, that's me, that's me. And I'm just going to pray with you. I'm just going to pray for you. That's awesome. 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 Come on. I just want you to extend your hands like you're receiving. And so, God, I thank you for every person that's here today. And I thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit. I thank you that you have more for me, God. And right now, in Jesus' name, I rebuke and I break all fear, all doubt, all skepticism, every single negative past experience, every barrier that's in the way right now of receiving all that you have for us. And we ask right now, in Jesus' name, standing to our feet, would you baptize us in the Holy Spirit. Fill us with your Holy Spirit from the top of our heads to the bottom of our feet to overflowing inside out and fill us with your power. And right now, by faith, by faith, we receive the Holy Spirit. By faith, we receive your power. And by faith, we receive all that you have for us 
In Jesus' mighty name we pray, and everybody said amen. Come on, church. If you love Jesus, if you're thankful for the Holy Spirit, come on, clap your hands. Come on, why don't you stand to your feet? Come on, why don't you stand to your feet? Here's the cool thing, church. Here's the cool thing. We talked about that in the first 113 weeks, 688 people have made the decision, the greatest decision of their life to follow Jesus that crossed the line of eternity. And there were some people that just made that decision online in overflow rooms right here. And can we clap our hands and celebrate with them? Come on, we're so proud of you. That's awesome. 